care of things that are given to us, put into our trust. A steward is one who takes care of things that are given to him in trust. What does God expect? How would he have us to use our time? First of all, this morning I think he wants us to recognize the source. Recognize the source of our time. The very recognition of time as a gift from God is an important first step. Moses recognized that in our scripture reading this morning. In Psalm chapter 90, we read it. Teach us to number our days. Sometimes we sing at Harvest Festival time. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. So thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. And not the least of, not the least of these good gifts that we are given is the gift of time. We begin to recognize this. And with the fleetingness of this gift of time, as we grow old, someone has written this little ditty. When I was a child, I laughed and wept. And time crept. When I was a youth, I dreamed and talked. And time walked. When I became a man, a full-grown man, time ran. We can, exp we can agree with that, can't we? And later, as I grew older, time flew. And soon I shall find while traveling on that time is gone. God has given to each of us enough time to accomplish his purpose for our individual lives on this planet. God has given us every day those 86,400 seconds doesn't matter whether you're the King of England, the Queen of England, whether you're the President of the United States, or whether you're a man working for the city in Niagara Falls and doing an honest day's work. You've got the same gift from God every day. 86,400 seconds. And the scriptures exhort us to recognize the source of that time and remind us that it is God who determines the length of of our stay here on earth and remind us of the importance of that little prayer of Moses. Teach us to number our days so that our lives may be fruitful and plentiful as we fill the time that God has given to us here on earth. Now we could talk a long time about how we fill that time and there are a lot of things that are important and everyone fills it differently because God has given us all different responsibilities. But we recognize that that time is from him. And it's not something we can save up. We often try and do that, don't we? I'll do that later when I get a little more time. You never have a little more time. You still always got 86,400 seconds every day. But we all do that, don't we? We're all guilty. Recognize that that gift from, comes from God. Secondly, it's important that we recognize that God not only gives us that gift, God not only gives us the gift but he places some demands on that time. And that's what this business of being a steward is all about. Recognizing not only that someone has given you a gift, but he's put some demands upon you as to what will happen with that gift. And we'll deal more, a little more with that next Sunday morning. The psalmist recognized that in Psalm 31, verse 14 and 15. He said this, But as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My time is in your hand. God, my time is in your hand. And we must be sensitive to the opportunities that God places in our way and the opportunities that he gives to us to utilize that 86,400 seconds that is ours every day. Paul is writing to the church at Colossae, Colossians chapter 4 of that great epistle. And he outlines for us how we should live as a Christian. I read beginning at verse 2 of Colossians 4. Here's what he says about using our time. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Being a good steward of the time. Our use of our time will reflect our priorities. Jesus himself said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What's important to you is how you will spend your time. 
So when we're talking about this business of stewardship of our time, we're talking about perhaps getting some of the priorities of our life in place and in proper perspective. Because what's important is how we use our time. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He also said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added to you. That's a priority, isn't it? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in utilizing your time, in being a good steward of your time, and all these things will be added unto you. And then look at the promise he gives to us. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about its own things. Our time. We need to be diligent in the scheduling of our time. Yes, there are some things that are important for us. We need to take time for ourselves. There's probably a stage in the life of most individuals when they don't take enough time for themselves. And they can't say, oh, I can't wait till retirement and, and maybe I can find time to do all of those things. It doesn't always work that way, but it's nice to look ahead. More time does come available. But how much quality time of those 86,400 seconds a day do we really spend with God? With our spouse? With our children? With our non-Christian friends? A steward of the time, letting our lives reflect Jesus to them so that they too can come into that relationship with Him. God wants us to be faithful stewards of the time that He has given to us. Martin Luther, that great reformer of the church, is quoted as saying, I have so much to do today, got such a busy day ahead of me, he said, I got so much to do today that I'm going to start by spending the first three hours praying. I've got so much to do today that I'm going to spend the first three hours in time praying. And then finally we need to recognize our responsibility to redeem the time. We read from Ephesians, and it tells us that part of our walk with God is redeeming the time, making the best use and the best opportunity of the time that God has given to us. Now, another translation of that word redeem, it's got a lot of meanings to us. You know, we redeem a coupon, we go and get the value that's there. But another translation of that word redeem simply means make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of every opportunity. How many times do we forget to do something? Well, I'll do that later, and then we never ever do it. Because we didn't make the most of that opportunity. Just to pat someone on the back and say, you did a great job. Or just to bring a word of encouragement and say, I'm going to be praying for you while you go through that surgery. Or that trial time in your life. Take time. Make the most of every opportunity. And that comes to us as a command from Scripture. Paul is referring in part to the management of time, the stewardship of time. And stewardship is the management of something that doesn't belong to us. And the psalmist said, you know, if my days are fourscore years, maybe more, it doesn't belong to us. Someone else determines that. We need to do the most with the time that is given to us. The management of something that doesn't belong to us. Something that is renewable to a certain extent. But something that we can't save up and put in the bank for the future. How many times have you and I uttered the phrase and said something to the effect, Boy, how time flies. I couldn't get through this day. But it doesn't really, does it really? Does it really fly? There are times in life when we think it does, perhaps. One of our illustrations earlier made reference to the difference on our outlook of time at various stages of our life. When you're a kid, you can't wait to grow up and do all those things. Can't wait to be 18 and get a driver's license and, and, and 21 and I can be an adult and all that kind of stuff. And then when you get there, boy, the time starts to roll along even faster and faster and faster. But the clock, friends, doesn't change, does it? It ticks away the same time and the same pace that it always did. 60 seconds to the minute and 60 minutes to the hour 